I spend most of my time running a very successful uh, field research program called Field Studies. And it basically provides academic assistance uh, for our students to get out into the world to seek inspiration for making art. Um, we've been running the program since uh, about 2000 and for the last uh, seven or eight years we've had a very successful collaboration with the Murray-Darling Basin Authority. And so we've spent the last three years um, uh, in collaboration with um, the Centre for Public Awareness of Science here at the University, um, evaluating the effectiveness of the Field Studies program. We started with a, a Field Studies program in St George in southern Queensland in the northern part of the Murray-Darling Basin. We then went to Tumut uh, in New South Wales, um, across to the Riverland and uh, Renmark on the Murray um, in South Australia and finally at Benalla in northern Victoria. We conducted programs in those four locations and they were extensively evaluated. Uh, in all, about 60 artists took place in the four programs um, and uh, they were evaluated by a, a researcher um, about their experience in, re in relation to uh, producing fine art for uh, for exhibition in consultation with the community. Um, the community was, uh, was evaluated too by another researcher uh, to get their perspective on this practice. And uh, we would exhibit uh, uh, the outcome of the artist's field work um, in the locations at the end of the program. I've been involved um, with John Reed and Engaging Visions for the past three years while doing my PhD. So I participated in Engaging Visions as both a student making art as well as one of the researchers. Uh, the research, from my perspective, I looked at what the um, experience of the artists were who participated in, in the field studies program. And I, um, I also participated in each of the field studies program and produced art along with the other students. And so the, the the goal behind my research within the project was to to look at, um, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence that say that artists are quite profoundly motivated by working on issues to do with the environment within their art, but there's no um, proper information to say how best to go about doing that. So my job was to interview the artists, I did a qualitative research where I interviewed the artists before they went on a field study program to find out what their expectations were and then after they'd done their exhibition and returned back to Canberra I interviewed them again. Some of the key things that came out were uh, a lot of the artists who attend field studies already have an interest in the environment but not necessarily producing art that talks about their environmental concerns. And so I found that um, of the artists who I interviewed, a doubling of them ended up producing art about environmental concerns than they thought that they would. And a very big important part of field studies and a, and a key motivator for the students going is the opportunity to go into a place that they wouldn't normally go. Um, uh, field studies is not normally run where the main tourist attractions are and learn from the local experts. They get to meet with scientists, the local indigenous leaders, the mayor, um, local artists and within that first field trip they get a, quite a comprehensive take on what the local people consider to be the main environmental concerns. Uh, my name's Rod Lambert, I'm uh, from the Australian National Centre for Public Awareness of Science and uh, I'm the non-artist in the flock when it comes to the Engaging Visions Research Project. I've come on board as the uh, evaluation guy, so I'm a social scientist by training. Um, what we did from the science uh, evaluation side was to look at each of the four field study sites and evaluate how communities responded to uh, what was going on with the um, field study uh, activities. We ultimately came up with a lot of recommendations. We came up with 25 recommendations from analysing this material. Um, some of the key ones were things like verifying some of the practices that have been going on a lot in these programs before we started to evaluate, such as making sure you exhibit art back in spaces that people are familiar with, like uh, empty shop fronts or unused banks and things like this, rather than staying in galleries. It encourages people who aren't familiar with art to perhaps wander in, because what I've found is, again, the non-artist in the pack, the process of creating art is actually quite a foreign one if you're not involved 
in the art work, or the art world, I should say. What happens in the field, of course, is that uh, while we're out in these places, um, uh, the artists uh, consult with local scientists, with, um, with um, uh, shire officials, um, community activists, indigenous leaders, and other artists. Does this picture remind you of anything? It should. The art pieces are the works of local and visiting artists from the Australian National University's School of Arts and depict scenes close to home. In fact, each painting, sculpture and photograph has been inspired by the Riverland and the stories of locals. It's also important that the community actually then gets involved with providing us um, feedback in terms of oh, did, this, did this exhibition actually reflect their environment, their, out, their issues uh, and also what did it make it make them feel? During the field trips, the artists um, have been really warmly received by the community that John Reid has organised to talk to them. And there's, I remember at Benalla there was um, a key project that motivated quite a few of the artists, and that was the Regent Honey Eater project that a local guy, Ray Thomas, ran. Um, which looked at um, reconnecting the vegetation corridors through farms. And I know a lot of the students ended up producing work about that and even one lady um, wrote a song and um, performed that. She's a professional musician as well. And so she performed that at one of the evenings that we ran with the community. We go out with very talented people and, and I'm always amazed at the depth of talent that, that year after year comes up with our students. Um, uh, so, and these people, um, you know, throw their heart and soul into trying to render as uh, aesthetically powerful visual material a lot of these issues that the communities are, are facing. And so each work in its own way has something to offer. Um, the focus of my art has been remnant vegetation and uh, I, I do photography and a lot of, the, and mostly landscape, and a lot of the um, photographers I've looked to are what you'd call wilderness photographers who've photographed areas that are mostly locked up in national parks. So my research is more looking at remnant vegetation on areas of land that are still in production, mostly farming areas, and seeing how you can um, represent that through photographs, show their beauty, show their character. And so with Engaging Visions, um, I started off doing fairly traditional landscape photos of remnant vegetation in St George, um, met a couple of landholders and they let me photograph the vegetation on their land. Uh, when we went to Renmark I wanted to kind of open my mind more and see what came to me. It, it often, um, a lot of artists who I interviewed for my PhD, they, they, they like to go to a place with an open mind and see see what occurs to them. Um, I'm usually much more fixed and have an idea so with my next field trip I tried to be a bit more open and looked at the Mallee and um, yeah we stayed in an old sheep farm that's now by a reserve and I was travelling around the Mallee and then you go down into the you travel there's the Mallee and then there's the the orchards right next door and with re these really lush um, at the time we were there really lush oranges on the trees and you're sort of looking at what that land's producing and compared to the Mallee, it's such a contrast in how they look. You wonder how they could, you know, produce these beautiful oranges. So my work was looking at fruits of the Mallee. So I ended up buying some of those oranges and placing it in the Mallee in this installation of this grid, something I'd never done before. And that's something that field studies does. It does give you that opportunity to just take those risks and try something new. And what I like very much about this project is the idea of integrating arts and sciences and communities very subtly. So traditional science communication enterprises require a lot of bringing in science and sort of adding a sugar pill of some description and then delivering it to people. Whereas in a, in a situation like this, the science is kind of snuck in behind the scenes. If people are interested, they can explore it further. But what they're doing really with these kinds of artwork potentially is flagging people's uh, interest and curiosity. So no one's being, no one's being forced. And I think that's good. And also there's the classic um, art as catalyst. So people are being brought together in a space they might not normally interact within with uh, um, ideas and, and images and artefacts that would inspire them to have discussions they might not normally have. And so what I like about this project is it's, uh, I call it uh, stealth science communication or courageous science communication. We're kind of rolling it in the back door as a, as a secondary goal, but still with some nice results, I think.
What we're doing now is uh, uh, we're bringing together the work from those four programs and we're having a, a, a major concluding exhibition here at the School of Art which will open on the 5th of August. Um, there are 31 artists uh, participating in that show um, and we're hoping that uh, that, that will um, give uh, the university, uh, our partners in the Murray-Darling Basin Authority uh, and the general public here some idea of, um, of uh, what we can do to help communities in the basin by engaging artists with them to produce fine art. So from the, the results we've written a book which includes both the artworks and the, the structure of the evaluation and some results, the 25 recommendations I mentioned. And we're also creating an evalu uh, evaluation, engaging visions guide, which is going to be a guide for people to actually try and step out and conduct these field studies themselves, be they in a tertiary environment or beyond in the community uh, and an organisation that's more interested in dealing with arts and the environment and so forth. That guide will be up on the website, in fact, connected to this, I hope, um, progressively rolling out over the next few months towards the end of 2010. But there is some information already there, including the book itself, the larger coffee table book you, that's available as a free PDF for people who are interested. Uh, people will be moved by, um, by uh, the efforts of our artists in trying to articulate uh, these very important concerns that confront our local communities. Well, it's called Engaging Visions for a Region, but it also engaged me as a researcher in this. It was quite intriguing, frustrating and difficult at times like all big projects, but yeah, it was just intriguing.